Today's episode of A Brief History is sponsored by Squarespace. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out more information. If you're anything like me, then you probably have a chronic disease of the pancreas. But more importantly, you were born in the mid-1990s. You know, late enough that you don't really remember the 90s, but early enough that you can still read BuzzFeed and feel like you get it. And if there's one thing we 2000s kids disguised as 90s kids remember, it's Nicktoons. You know, the days of Doug, Rugrats, Hey Arnold, Wild Thornberries, Rocket Power, and a bunch of other crazy cartoons that I, I, I didn't really like all that much. But when it comes to Nickelodeon, there was always one cartoon that reigned supreme and it wasn't as told by Ginger. No, Nickelodeon's ace in the hole was, of course, SpongeBob SquarePants. And for us 90s kid imposters, SpongeBob was inescapable. If we weren't playing Pokemon Silver on our lime green Game Boy Colors, or listening to 30 seconds of It's Gonna Be Me on our hit clips, that's right, I can list old things too. If we weren't doing all that, then we were probably watching SpongeBob on our SpongeBob TV while all snuggled up in our SpongeBob beds eating SpongeBob cream of wheat, which yes, is absolutely a real thing. There was no bigger kids cartoon in existence at the time. And even today, when cartoons are looking a lot less like cow and chicken and a lot more like Stevie University, SpongeBob is still out there just doing its thing. And I wanna talk about it. So hello and welcome to another episode of A Brief History. Today's episode, SpongeBob SquarePants. Ready, set, ho! SpongeBob was created by this dude named Steven Hillenburg, a guy who spent a good chunk of the 80s teaching marine biology to kids in Orange County, California. But while teaching his wet science class, he decided that he wanted to flex his art muscles too, creating a little comic called The Intertidal Zone that featured a bunch of talking sea creatures that aimed to help teach the little tadpoles more about underwater life, including this little weirdo, Bob the Sponge. I I, I don't I don't think he's going to be that important. But a Eventually, Hillenburg decided he was ready to move on from marine biology and further pursue his interest in art. So he packed up his stuff and enrolled at Cal Arts to study animation. A few years and one fine arts and experimental animation degree later, and Hillenburg gets picked up by Nickelodeon to work on a show called Rocco's Modern Life. But after that show ended in 1996, he kinda needed something new to work on. And at the recommendation of one of his Rocco co-workers, Hillenburg decided to pursue Sue making his own cartoon based off the intertidal zone. Change up a few things, figure out your main characters, do a few rounds of pitching in a Hawaiian shirt, and in 1997, Sponge Boy Ahoy was greenlit for full production. Despite that not actually being the name they went with, though that was the show's original title. And then, come May 1st, 1999, a Steven Hillenburg's show, now known as SpongeBob SquarePants, was officially premiered on Nickelodeon. We all know know what this show's about, right? SpongeBob lives in a pineapple under the sea, absorbent and yellow and porous is he. He gets into nautical nonsense with his various undersea friends, and he drops on the deck and flops like a fish, which means he is gasping for breath. He is clinging onto his life by a thread. He can't breathe. His spongy fish lungs cry out for water. The darkness creeps in slowly. He's scared. He had so much he still wanted to do in life, <laughs> only for his life to be cut so short in a tragic end. <laughs> But yeah, we all know what SpongeBob is about. It's your standard comedy story about a sponge that makes burgers for a greedy crab and does karate with a scientist squirrel who lives in an air dome. It's nothing you haven't seen before, your run-of-the-mill sponge-based comedy. But despite its clear and totally not sarcastic unoriginality, SpongeBob was an immediate hit for Nickelodeon. Audiences both young and old really latched onto this show's clever writing, unique world, and likable cast of characters, quickly making Spongebob Nick's newest number one show. But it went so much further than that. Throughout the early 2000s, Spongebob was a total phenomenon, with countless toys, books, video games, nightmares, and more. And of course, the show was still going strong, premiering a second and third season that were chock full of classic episodes that people still quote and make 
Twitter memes of today. In fact, SpongeBob had become such a massive hit that by November of 2004, the series saw a full-fledged feature film that was, again, pretty much a classic for my generation. Except for this scene, this scene messed me up. Goofing, 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 goofing. Dear Lord, I... I was only kidding about the whole suffocation thing. But as great as that movie was, this is where trouble started to brew. You see, by the time the SpongeBob SquarePants movie was released, the show had been on the air for about five years, and Steven Hillenburg was kinda ready to wrap things up. He and many of the show's writers felt like the series had run its course, and going any longer could risk the show jumping the shark. Wait, are there any shark characters in SpongeBob that I can make like a joke? joke out of here. Uh, there's the, there's the anchor arms guy. Uh, I think the tough guy from the salty spittoon, was he a shark? I think he was a shark. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Abandoned joke. Abandoned joke. So pretty much none of the main people behind SpongeBob wanted to keep the show going, but Nickelodeon sat in its pile of money was like, come on. And thus in 2005, we got SpongeBob season four, the first ever season of SpongeBob that Steven Hillenburg did not spearhead. He had stepped away from his showrunner position and acted as an executive producer instead, but didn't really have much of a hands-on involvement with the show. The new showrunner was longtime SpongeBob writer Paul Tibbet, and while this change happened pretty smoothly at the time, season four began what many view as a steady decline in quality for SpongeBob. Taking a pretty big leap here from 2005 to 2015, and the show had seen six more seasons and had even changed showrunners for a second time. Most of the writers who made the classic seasons were long gone, and the show's comedy and tone had been shifting in a way that really turned older fans off. The new seasons featured less of the clever writing and setups that fans loved, and instead started to get predictable and weirdly gross. The show was still doing well in ratings, but the sponge was starting to dry out. No, don't show that clip again. It's too sad. It's like one doty song away from making me shed. Tears, not my skin or my hair, just my, ugh, gross. However, after 10 years of decline, things actually started to turn around for SpongeBob. 2015 saw the premiere of SpongeBob's second movie, Sponge Out of Water. And for this movie, Steven Hillenburg returned in a major writing role for the first time in basically a decade. And following the warm reception of the film, Hillenburg did what many fans thought would never happen and returned to SpongeBob. And not only that, but a lot of writers from the show's golden age were also returning to the show. And as a result, seasons 10 and 11 have actually managed to get a lot of older SpongeBob fans back on board, bringing back older characters and settings that had pretty much been forgotten about in later seasons. Remember Bubble Bass? He's back. No Nosferatu, he's back. That guy that shouts, my leg! My leg? My leg! My leg! Oh, you better believe he's back. And outside of the show, SpongeBob's still doing really well as a general media franchise, boasting a Broadway musical that is way better than it has any right to be, and recently ended its run, which means I didn't get to see it. And there's a third movie coming in 2020, whatever. So SpongeBob has been through quite a few ups and downs over the years. Back when it premiered, it was quite literally the most popular kids show on television. However, despite never really having a drastic drop in ratings, the later seasons kinda tanked the show's reputation a bit. But at the end of the day, I almost don't think that matters. Like yeah, post movie SpongeBob was not as good as it used to be, but it was was far, far, far from the worst cartoon out there. And obviously it's fantastic that the show is picking up steam again and getting more creative. But even if that hadn't happened and the show freaking crashed, burned, and did an episode about why the ending to Life is Strange Before the Storm was actually really good, I don't think any of that could truly take away from this show's legacy of just being 
just really freaking good, guys. I mean, there's a reason that the characters and jokes from this show are still quoted and referenced to this day. And that's because it's just timeless quality comedy. The kind that going on 20 years later, we still remember by heart and chances are we'll still be quoting in another 20 years. So in conclusion, I think SpongeBob is good. Though I might be a tad bit biased. But you know what's even better than SpongeBob SquarePants? SpongeBob Square... Space, I'm sorry. Oh boy, it's sponsor time again. Yes, that's right. This episode of A Brief History was once again brought to you by the awesome people over at Squarespace. You got a website idea? You know how to do all that weird HTML coding stuff? Me neither. Luckily, Squarespace's all-in-one website building platform gives you everything you need to build your website with zero hard coding required. A whole zero percent. Plus, all their designer templates mean that the website you build will be so beautiful that it leaves everyone like, Got questions? They even got you covered there with their award-winning 24-7 customer support. And if all that sounds good to you, then you can head over to squarespace.com right now to start a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, be sure to go to squarespace.com slash foot of a ferret and enter the code ABH to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Seriously guys, with the way YouTube's been over the last couple of months, it's sponsors like Squarespace that really help keep not just me, but loads of other channels on YouTube afloat. Their support, as well as your support, means a ton. So again, if you're interested, that link again is squarespace.com slash foot of a ferret with the offer code ABH. Major thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Major thanks to you guys for supporting the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching guys, and DFTBA.